by nature, man is a social being in the sense that he cannot live alone. He needs to live within a community, within a society. And that is why he needs people as people need him. He needs to have friends. He needs to have associates that would help him when he is in need. And if you listen to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ regarding the companionship, there is a very beautiful hadith. And all the hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ are indeed beautiful. Because he tells us about himself, uh, about himself, I was given the concise of speech. أُوتِيتُ جَوَامِعَ الْكَلِمْ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And that is why one word or two words of the Prophet ﷺ, you need volumes to explain because of the knowledge contained in these two words. One of the fiqhi rules is لا ضرر ولا ضرار. That's it. The Prophet said لا ضرر ولا ضرار. Do not do something that is harmful for others, yet do not accept something that is harmful for you. And you can cascade this fiqhi rule on all chapters of the fiqh, whether it's in purity, whether it's in transactions, whether it's in marriage, two words the Prophet said So listen to this hadith with your heart and not with your ears, because it is coming from the Prophet who does not say except the truth and who does not teach us except what is beneficial for us, not only in the hereafter, but also in this life. The Prophet says alayhi salatu wasalam, the likeness of a righteous companion is that of the seller of musk. Either he will give you a gift or you will buy something from him or you will smell a pleasant fragrance from him. And the likeness of an evil companion is that of the man who works the bellows. Either he will burn your garment or you will smell an unpleasant odor from him. Now this hadith is, you all know it, right? Correct? Okay. We will just go briefly into it. The Prophet ﷺ told us about the good companion of having three choices or possibilities. The evil companion has only two. So the first quality or choice that you can get out of a good companion is that he may give you. A person that sells perfumes, he may give you a gift or you may buy from him. No favors from him. You're paying for it. Or the least you could get is the beautiful fragrance, the beautiful smell. Three things. If you want to look at a good companion, and this is essential because the benefit of tonight's lecture is that I scrutinize, I audit my list of companions. Get your mobile phone, don't turn it on, keep it off. And look into your contact and start saying good companion, evil companion, come see, come half half. I am not, there isn't half half, huh? He's either good or evil. So this is what we would like to get as a result from today's or tonight's lecture. So let's start. The Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam, a good companion either gives you. And what is meant by giving you? Meaning that he will directly advise you. Advise me of what? Of good things. Of things that benefit me in this life or gets me closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. So a good companion always constantly advising you. Akhi, you have to do this. You shouldn't do that. He's a good companion. He loves you. He doesn't want you to go to hell. He doesn't want to see that. So he tries his level best to prevent you. If your best friend is going to drink a glass that contains poison, what will you do? I'll sit back and laugh. <laughs> I'm going to see him in pain. No, you're going to say, this is poison. I've seen poison in it. 
He says, it's none of your business. I want to drink it. Well, khalas, it's not my business. The hell with him. Would you do this? You will prevent him. You will stop him. If he fights you and he tells you, no, I will drink it. What will you do? You'll fight him back. And if he, even if I had, have to beat him up so that I prevent him from doing that is wrong. That would be killing him. Likewise, a good companion would stop you from sinning. Although you don't like this, huh? You don't like people coming and advising you, this is haram. Even if it's your best friend, you find it difficult. You may accept it. You know, the funny thing is, if your best friend, who's your best friend? Muhammad, Abdullah, Ali. Who's my best friend? My wife. That is why Allah Azza wa described the wife in the Quran, وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِي يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ What's the meaning of sahiba? A girlfriend. Allah Azza wa wants us to take girlfriends. No, you have to know Arabic, huh? Don't jump the gun. Sahibatihi means his wife, because the closest friend to you is your wife. Subhanallah, the worst advice that comes to me is from my wife. If I do something and my wife tells me, you shouldn't have done this, Allahu Akbar, I start to grow horns and I become devilish. Why? Because this is human nature. Men usually don't like to take advice from someone they think might be below them. So this is a good companion. He would give you free of charge or you may buy from him, meaning he may not be as good to advise you directly, but he is so good that you learn from him by just looking at him, by just listening to him without him coming to you directly. Like Al-Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on his soul. His companions used to say that whenever he had a dars in the masjid, thousands of people used to attend. 500 of them used to only scribe and write the hadith. So whatever he says from knowledge, they're writing it down. They are students of knowledge. The rest of the people in the thousand are not learning except from the way he behaves, the way he talks, the way he acts. So this is the second type. He's not advising you directly, but you are learning from him through his character. How many friends do we have like this? A lot. I know a lot. I know a lot of the brothers that I know personally. MashaAllah. Yani I'll tell you an example. I was in a, a trip with one of the brothers, a group of da'is, a trip that is, we were engaged in a conference. Don't think that I'm, oh, Sheikh goes for a trip of that kind. No, I was in a conference. So I was invited with a group of da'is. And one of us, mashallah, he was so keen on the first row and on attaining the first takbir that he made me ashamed. We all pray in the masjid, alhamdulillah. We never miss salah. But this brother was so particular. He says, I would never ever let one prayer time comes, except I'm in the first row behind the Imam. This is something I, 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 can, I cannot compromise. And I started thinking of myself, SubhanAllah, I preach people and I tell people, but I'm not as keen as he is. I am telling people you have to try your best to come in the first, first row and attain the first takbir. And I'm not doing it. Wallahi, shame on me. Since that day, I am trying my level best to be behind the Imam in the first row and not miss one takbir. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal guided me through this, whom I bought the musk from. He didn't give me. I bought it from. He never told me, Sheikh Asim, why are you in the second row, in the tenth row? Why do you come late for the first rak'ah? No. But I learned from him. So this is the second choice of a companion. Or the least you can get of a good companion is a good fragrance, a good smell. Now, how could my companion give me a good smell and a good fragrance? I'm not learning from him and he's not teaching me. But when someone asks about me, 
we, you know, Brother Asim, he proposed to uh, uh, my sister, to my daughter. What do you know about him? Well, I know that he's a friend of Sheikh so and so. Oh, he's a friend of the Sheikh. Alas, he's good. This is a good fragrance. Why? Because if I want to evaluate you, I will look into your contact list. Let's see. Who is your contact list? Brother Abdullah, give me your mobile. Contact list. Lena, Janet, Susan. Astaghfirullah. Sheikh Abdullah, what's, where is this? So oh, it's for work. It's all work. Yeah, it's business, huh? MashaAllah. Khalas. I wash my hands with detol seven times and once with soil. This, this brother is not good anymore. So by the people you go with, I can judge you. Because, and some people say, Akhi, you don't have the right to judge me. I have bad friends, but I am good inside. And I will fix them one day. This is, with all due respect, nonsense. If you have a box of rotten apples, and you bring the healthiest and the freshest apple in the world, and you put it inside, what will happen? The whole box, mashallah, definitely the good apple would rot. This is human nature. So this is what a good companion does to you. And look at good companions. Now, a lot of you here were brought by a good companion. A brother told you, Ya there is this old sheikh from Saudi, he's Wahhabi, he's extremist, he's fundamentalist, and but he cracks a joke every now and then, but he doesn't have anything. But yeah, instead of sitting at home, let's go and listen to him. Yeah, let's go. Now, this companion of yours is a good companion because a good companion takes you to places that draw you closer to Allah Azza wa A good companion would go with you in a beneficial visit, not necessarily a circle of knowledge. Let's go and visit our brother so-and-so, he's ill. Let's take some reward by visiting him. Let's go to a book fair and buy some useful books. I need a book of tafsir, I need a book of this, I need a book on uh, physics, something useful, something you learn. A good brother, a good companion tells you, Akhi, next week is, uh, for example, uh, uh, a vacation or so. Let's go and take Umrah. What about performing Hajj? This year, this is a good brother. He says, Wallahi, akhi, I need a, comp a good companion. Let's go for Hajj. Oh, I don't feel like it. I no, 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 let's go for Hajj. He's encouraging you until you say, Yalla, let's go for Hajj. That is a good companion who's drawing you closer to Allah Azza wa And the least you benefit from a good companion, if he did not deter you from evil, he does. If you want to smoke, akhi, smoking is haram. Come on, you know I don't like smoking. Tuck it in, so you don't smoke. If you look at a beautiful woman passing by, he wouldn't say, Whew. no, he would tell you, Akhi, lower your gaze, haram, Allah is watching. This is not uh, 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 the right thing to do. So he would deter you from doing haram. The least he could do, even if you don't want all of this, if you're not present and someone says, Ya Akhi, this friend of yours, He's fat, he's short, he's ugly, he's stingy, he is bad character, he does this and that. He would not stay silent. He would interfere and say, shut up. He's my friend. Fear Allah. This is backbiting. This is not permissible. He would defend you. He would protect you when you are not present. This is what I qualify as a good companion who loves you, not because of your wealth. Not because of your wasita. You know wasita? We have a problem in Saudi with wasita. We call it vitamin wow. Wasita, nipmatism, I think they call it. It is when, not what you know, it is who you know. And it is killing the Arab world because it's destroying everything. No rules, no regulations, it's what you know. No, a good companion knows you not because you can take him places. He loves you for the sake of Allah because you draw him and he draws you closer to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And I pray that all our companions would be like this.